I've known you for quite a while. You are an author. You came on to one of my shows called OK, OK, We're Listening. We were just talking about uh, relationships because I wanted you on there because you are an, you're an author, a poet, uh, and you talk about relationships. So we had you chopping it up with us. But then um, I was already a stroke survivor. But then, you know, I had you talk to my daughter. Uh, she She's an inspired artist. So I thank you for talking with her. No problem. One day you came up to me and said, Greg, I had a stroke. I'm like, what? Not not you. Not you. And, and, and I was like, you know what? You know, you have a story to tell, you know, all this stuff that's happening with you in your life. Um, I would love to be the first one to interview you to actually bring this to the world. So I, I thank you and I congratulate you for overcoming your fears of actually speaking on this because a lot of times people don't want to talk about being a stroke survivor because they feel like it's a, a bad thing. And um, I, I really thank you for actually coming out of, I guess you could say, your, your closet and showing the world that, hey, it's not all bad. And you need to actually express this to people so they understand what the things are about when it comes to strokes. So thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me again. And yeah, so, I was in the closet for a while. Yeah. So what, what 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 actually happened to you? You know, I know you told me about it, but you know, tell the audience what happened to you. I was actually in my car. Um, I was at my dad's, and I was backing out of a parking spot, and I hit. Um, I hit a pole, mm. and then when I went forward, I hit a, um, like a a little wall, and there was a lady on her terrace, and I had my window rolled down because I felt real hot, and so she was asking me if I was okay, and at the time, I just felt hot. I felt fine, but I could hear myself slurring. It, I sounded as if I had one too many drinks and she was just like, yeah, you're not okay. You're not okay. You're not okay. And she asked me, was I visiting someone? I told her, you know, where my dad lived. And so she had somebody go get my dad. And then my dad came to my car and he was just like, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm, I just feel hot. I just need air. And so he um, opened up the car door and he pulled me out of the car. And as he was pulling me out the car, I fell right through his arms and I fell I hit my face hit the ground hard so I have like a scar here and not right here it's going away but um I just passed I just passed out and so um went to the hospital uh the ambulance came and got me went to the hospital um they kept asking me you know what was wrong I'm like you know I'm fine I don't I just passed out I didn't know what was wrong and so um they did the EKG the little EKG, and then um, they made me get a CAT scan. And so uh, I got the CAT scan, and the doctor there said I had a hole in my brain. And then from there, went back, got some rest, and then the very next hold day- on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A hole in your brain? That's Yeah, the CAT scan showed that I had a hole in my brain. Okay. And so um, I went back. They didn't really do much. And then I went home. The next day, my head was pounding. And so my mom took me back to the emergency room. And I think I got another, I think I got another CAT scan that day. I'm not sure. I think I got another CAT scan that day. I'm not too sure. But then they scheduled um, a CAT scan with and without contrast. Mm -hmm. And so she was after I got that, that was like a week later. Like a, one, This happened on a Thursday. I went back to the hospital on Friday. So that following Tuesday or Wednesday, I went for the CAT scan with, 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 with and without the contrast. And she was just like, you know, if there's something wrong, well, you know, call you back or whatever. Um, three days passed. I thought I was good, you know, for the three days because I didn't hear anything from the doctors. And then um, that night, that night the doctor had called, but I missed the phone call and I didn't check my messages. And so I just called the doctor back and the doctor was just like, yeah, you had a mild stroke. And so it was just like, 
okay, now what's next? Like the left side of my face was kind of droopy. It wasn't too drastic, but it was just a little droopy. Um, yeah, my whole left side was completely weak. I couldn't even, um, I couldn't eat properly. I couldn't, I couldn't hold my fork. I couldn't hold the spoon. I just couldn't eat properly with, you know, with using the fork. And um, they had kept asking me a bunch of questions like, you know, my eating habits, did I have high blood pressure, this, that, and the third. And it was just like, there's nothing wrong with me, you know? So, I just so, had so before you go any further, I just want to let the, the audience know that our Arnitra our, our looks like a supermodel. She's probably like 5'10", 5'11", and she is very slim, so it's not like she's unhealthy or anything like that. She has something wrong with her brain that she didn't know about. So please continue with the story. So um, they was trying to figure out, like, why I had the stroke, because at the time I was 43. I'm 44 now. So they were just, they couldn't figure it out. Um, I had, let's see, I went to the cardiologist. They couldn't find anything. And I went to uh, another doctor in Westchester. They ended up sending me to Westchester Medical Center. And I had another test there. They couldn't find anything. And then I had a, a, a spinal tap. And as I was getting the spinal tap, the doctor was just like, you know, technically you didn't have a stroke. Technically, how can I not have a stroke when the neurologist said I had a stroke? He said that the artery in my brain cleared up on its own and it showed no signs of a stroke. That's the same look I had. What does that mean? That's the same exact thing. That's the same exact look I had. Yeah, the, he said the artery healed on its own and showed no signs of me having a stroke. And then even after the spinal tap, they're still like, you know, what's wrong? Like, how did this happen? To this day, they don't know why I had the stroke. I also have um, rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. And so they thought maybe that had something to do with it. But no. Like, so, to this day, they don't, they don't know why I had it. So I wasn't under any, any stress. There was nothing bothering me. It just so, came... What about the hole in the head, like in your brain? It's not there. It's not there anymore. It's not there. They don't see. It's not there. <laughs> I don't even know how they comprehend that. Like, it's like everything is like a ghost. You know what I mean? It's just like a yeah. ghost. It came and it went. And yeah, he said the doctor said the artery cleared on its own. There is no hole. They see no signs of a hole anywhere. Like, wow. I've gone through so many tests, and but they're just like, you know, everything healed on its own. So it's just like, okay. So a miracle has happened for you. Um, but and I, think the, that's the why, time, I think that's why I was in the closet. Hmm. Because, you know, you see stroke survivors and you know, you see what they're going through and compared to what they're going through, like I didn't go through. I went to occupational speech and physical therapy. I kid you not. Three weeks and I was done. But like I can still. Like my mouth, I can't even open my mouth wide enough to put a like to take a bite of a donut. Really? Like I yeah I can't open my yeah I can't open my mouth wide enough to take a bite of a donut. It's like I gotta pinch it or like kind of maneuver it in a way that I can take a bite of it. Right. But yeah, I went to occupational, speech, and physical therapy for like yeah three weeks. So I'm I'm thinking about this and when you say that a stroke survivor, you know they they go through a lot more things. You know the the, the the spectrum was very wide. You know, you have people that have mild strokes and have very few symptoms, and you have people that have very bad symptoms or either death. Um, so I won't necessarily just cancel that out. Um, but everybody's stroke is different. So I know it does pay a, a mental mental uh, part in your head. Now, did you have any problems with anxiety or depression when this was actually happening to you, when you was trying to find out your diagnosis? Um. 
I don't think I had my anxiety. It wasn't that high. It wasn't that high. It wasn't that low. It was in between. It's just like the same anxiety I had before is the same anxiety anxiety I have now. Um, as far as depression, that's a whole nother demon. It's like I've been depressed. It's like, you know, when you're going from test to test to test to test and they can't figure out what the hell is going on, it's just like, what is wrong with me? Why can't they figure out, like, what's wrong with me? What causes? How can I prevent it from happening again if I can prevent it from happening again, you know? And it's just like, it made you, it made me just kind of reevaluate everything. It's just like, you know, things that I wanted to do, I always kind of held off or didn't, or wasn't aggressive about, uh, about whatever it is that I wanted to do. So now it's just like, you know what? If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. If I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. It helped me understand the power of no. Mm. As well. Because like, if somebody asks me for something, to do something, I'm always like, okay, you know, I'll do it. Right. But now it's just like, you know what I'm always doing? So let me just kind of sit back and just relax and just do for me, you know? So a, a lot of people don't understand that concept now. And I'm glad you did bring that up because... I know for myself, I know that life has changed since this has happened to me. And I think completely different about time. And uh, I know time is precious. I know that I need to do things that my whole perspective is different. You know, when you think about those things, do you have conversations with people and do they understand what you're talking about? Or is it just foreign to them and you just feel like you have nobody to talk to about that? Um, when I need to talk to somebody about it, I find myself reaching out to you. Um, but I don't think people understand and I don't have the time to explain. I don't want to sit there and take the time to explain. It's like, this is what has happened. This is how I'm feeling. Now you put it together and you try to understand it because I'm not. I, I, mm. See, that, that's, that's a very valid point. Cause I, I, I assume that other people around me didn't have a stroke or have brain damage. So they should be able to comprehend this and decipher what needs to be done and do it instead of me explaining it to them. But I'm realizing that a lot of people have mental health issues and that has been normalized so much that when you come up with your issues that you're talking about that you had some brain damage, they're like, so what? I have problems with memory too. I'm like, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's definitely not the same. <laughs> It's not the same. And That's called forgetfulness. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. the same. Yes. It's like yes. yes. You have to kind of reprogram yourself to to do certain things. It's just like okay, I can't do this like this. Now I have to do it like this. I have to make adjustments. You forgetting something, you don't have to make adjustments. It's like I have to make an adjustment now. It's like I can't do things like I used to be able to do it before. You know All what right. I mean? So it's like. But I don't have the time to sit there and explain. I'm just going to tell you once, and that's it. That's that New York commodity. That's that New York commodity. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you once. One time, that's it. And if you can't understand that, then <laughs> that's on you, not me. I, I, I find it very interesting that people don't understand that concept. That uh, they look, you know, a lot of people just look at people and they say, "Okay, you look healthy." You look functional, so everything is right with you, but they don't really understand mental health and also uh, brain damage or, you know, strokes. So they automatically just put things underneath the table. So when you say, like, you know, you, you don't have time to explain, and they look at you like, why are you so moody? Why are you so, quote, unquote, bitchy? You're like, you're not bitchy. You're not moody. You're like, this is how it is, and you don't seem like you want to grasp this idea because you mm -hmm. automatically assume that mental health issues is normal. And that's a big problem that we have in our society, especially in the black community. Yeah, it is. A, it is a big problem. A lot of people, you know, don't think that we should go to therapy, but we do need to go to therapy. You know, it's just like there's nothing bad about it. It's just trying to help you better yourself emotionally and mentally. So it's just like, why not want to be healthy mentally and emotionally? Get the do, help. Do you find yourself doing this? Because like before. 
Uh, and, you know, you're from New York. You know, you know, we're from the actual same town as me, Spring Valley, New York. Shout out to everybody from Spring Valley, New York. Uh, but before, I used to get people just come with me with rumors or stories about people, you know, negative energy. And I'd just be like, stop, stop. I don't want to hear none of that right now, you know. That's really not important. I don't know what that person is doing. That's irrelevant. They didn't do it to me. I don't want to hear it. Do you find yourself in those same type of shoes that you're just cutting people off because they come up with that negative energy because of this thing that's happened to you? I started doing that before. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I started doing that before. It's just like that. I, um, mm. <laughs> the reason why I'm asking that, cause I, and, and I get what you're saying with that, I, I didn't even really understand that concept, you know, because, you know, I just thought that, you know, everything is funny. I like to make jokes all the time. You, you know, you, you follow me with, you know, Instagram and Facebook. You know, I'd be, I'd be a jokester a lot. And I just like to have fun. I, I, I didn't care. But now it's like, I really don't have time for that. Like, I really don't have time for foolishness anymore. It's, time is too precious. Things is going on in this world. We're in a pandemic now, and people are just still acting like we have all the time in the world. And we and, don't. And we don't. You know, I had a conversation with a friend the other day about um, understanding who you are and understanding that that five-year-old Gregory or five-year-old whoever his name was and um, all the things, all the traumas that we have in this world made us go into a different direction. So he was telling me that, Greg, I'm trying to find a five-year-old person so I can live my life and do all the passions that I have in this life that God has given me. I'm like, yeah, I'm the same way, but I almost died and I thought that way. You haven't just almost died and you thought that way. So how do you feel about that? Is that something that you really are passionate about now that you want to find out your purpose because of what this happened to you? I think I found my purpose. But yeah, I found my purpose way before this happened. But it, uh, it's taking me a different way. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, the topics I write about, I write about, you know, relationships, I write about love, sex, all that good stuff. But with the stroke, it's like, it's kind of taking me, instead of going straight, left, right, left, right, I want to go right, left, right, left. So it's kind of taking me in a different direction. And it's just like, I'm fighting it. But every day, it's just like something in here is like, no. Nah. You got to go this way. You got to go this way. You got to go this way. It's like, but I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. But it, it's, it has me on the same path, but just going in a different direction. And I think I'm still, like, I'm out the closet, but I'm in the closet with that direction. So it's just, it's just taking me a different direction. It's taking me a different direction. I don't think I'm ready to go, but I think if I go that direction, then... I've really reached a level, a high level in my purpose, if that makes sense. Okay. That does make sense. So. It's eligible for me to do more or to want more, but it's like, I'm still kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'm really ready. I'm very curious about this answer from you because I know that you are a writer. So you, you have a way with words. So with, with, um, a lot of stroke survivors, I ask this question to almost everybody that is a stroke survivor, you know, like how you have depression, you have those different five different phases of depression or of grief. Uh, do you feel like there was like different phases of um, your stroke? Like for me, it was, you know, denial. I didn't have a stroke. Then I had acceptance. And then when that acceptance was, I'm like, dad, my old body is gone. I, the old Gregory is gone. I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. And then I got to this next level of like, I got past that and I was at this enlightenment stage of like, I know I have things to teach people because I know how precious life is and life is very short, very precious. You can't be wasting your time on this foolishness anymore. Do you feel that same type of way or can you articulate it differently? Um, I was in denial for a while. This happened last year. April 15th is when it happened. I have been in denial Since then, um, I think coming into the new year, I just began to accept it. And so now 
I'm still in the accepting phase, but I know that um, I have to kind of get my story out there. So I'm probably the same phase that you're in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, like I said, I was in, I was in denial for a long, long time. It's like when my head would bother me, like when I've had it, I have two boys, 11 and 9. Mm -hmm. They don't know I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I look at them and I'm just like, damn, I want to see them grow. I want to see them get married if they're going to get married, if they're going to have kids. I want to be there for them. I need to see. I need to see them be whoever they're going to become. So it's like, I felt by looking at them, it's like, okay, I have to accept that I had the stroke. And now that I accepted the fact that I had the stroke, now I can move on. Don't start tearing up. Don't do that. Okay. No, 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 no. But if don't I didn't start tearing up, on me. I don't, I don't. I don't. You're from New York. You're from New York. <laughs> You know, I, right, I, 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 I had to bring you back. I had to bring you back. I didn't want you to go there. With no, you. I, I, being honest, no, I, you, I didn't accept it. Then I wouldn't be able to get. I wouldn't have been able to move on. You know what? That that was that was a very powerful thing for me as well. My daughters were the reason why. You know, you you, you can see me now. This is why I'm back on Instagram and Facebook, trying to give out my story, trying to help out others because I want to be able to walk them down the aisle when they get married. I want to be able to see their kids. I want to be able to see them graduate high school. I, I want to do all those things. I want to be there. So I have to be present. So I know I can't just go into my little shell. I have to be able to express, you know, I'm a stroke survivor. What is your superpower? I need to be able to do these things. If I can't. Yeah. So I understand exactly what you mean on that. And I, Yeah, it's, that's hard. That's hard because you, you really want to be strong. You want to be mommy. You want to be that Wonder Woman mommy. And some days you just don't feel it. I, I get that. Yeah, you, yeah. Just like, I need to rest. My head hurt. I just, mommy needs to rest. So it's just like, but. So I, I know you said that the doctor said that you didn't have a stroke, but it seemed like you still have most of the symptoms of what a stroke is. And, and I don't know if you're accepting it or not. That's neither here or there. But the question I have for you is, um, what kind of ailments do you still have now? Do you still feel weak? You know, you know, besides the mouth stuff, is there anything else on you that is um, that is off? Sometimes when I'm trying to express myself or trying to find like the right word verbally, I have I'm like, OK, 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 what's that word? What's that word? What's that word? And then I'll give like if I'm talking to my mom, I'll give her the definition of the mm -hmm. word and she'll be like, OK, this is what you mean. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I mean. So it's like it's some not all the time, but some of the times I can't find the right words. But if I, I can't, the word doesn't come, the definition comes and I'll give the person the definition. Like, what is it when you whatever it is? And then they'd be like, that's the word. That is a form of aphasia. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. That's one of the forms of aphasia that you can't formulate the words. You know the word, but you can't get it out your mouth. It's just your process of speed is slowing down. I have that problem, too. And it's hard for me to even have conversations with people because if like right now you and I are having a conversation and if you just start talking about football and just went down that path, I'm like, no, nah, we're talking about strokes. Stop going over there because I don't understand what you're talking about over there. I can't mm -hmm. comprehend that stuff. So do you have a problem um, talking with people? Like you said, you talked to your mother about that. Is that frustrating talking to your mother or anybody else? when you're trying to get these words out and they're not patient with you? Like, how do you do deal with that? Um, I, it, I don't have a problem. They don't, I'm thankful that my mom doesn't get frustrated, but when she talks to me, I get frustrated. So like, okay. So for, for instance, to get the, the COVID vaccination, I was telling her, okay, you have to go online, you have to make the appointment, and then you got to pick a time. And she was asking me something, and I'm in my head, I'm like, that's what I just said to you. Like, she repeated what I said, but she repeated it in the question. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, 
that's what I just said. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like she repeats what I said, but she repeats it in the form of a question. And I'm just like, and I get frustrated. And today she was just like, well, last night when we were on the phone, I could sense that you were getting frustrated. I got what you were saying, but what I was asking, what you were asking was the same thing I just told you. So yeah. I get frustrated when that happens. But like once I, if I'm trying to communicate or express myself and like, I'm glad nobody gets frustrated. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, they're com communicating to me, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at them. Like, you don't make sense. <laughs> it's like, you don't make sense. You make sense to you, but you don't make sense to me. So, so, hold on. Because I agree with you. I understand exactly what you're talking about. So, do you find it, because I find it a lot, that people are scared to talk to you now because they know that you have a short fuse because once you say something, you, you said it, and you don't want to re-explain it because it should be plain as day to them. <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> it's like now I think, okay, damn, I got to talk to people like I'm talking to my kids. But even my kids understand me on a different level. You know what I mean? On a higher level. So it's just like, if I don't have to dumb down to my kids, I shouldn't have to dumb down to you. <laughs> exactly. All right, Arnitris, we've been talking for 30 minutes. So at this time, I want to shift gears a little bit because I have these questions I want to ask, and um, I will be putting this on my YouTube channel. But um, okay. I want you to, I'm going to give you these five questions, and I want you to give me a 30-second uh, soundbite for each one of them. So um, are you ready? Yep. All right. Um, first question, do you feel different about life? Yes, I do feel different about life. I can't take anything for granted. Can't take life for granted because tomorrow's not guaranteed. And so I got to live it to the fullest. Whatever it is that I want to do, I have to do it now. I can't procrastinate or I can't put it on the back burner. I got to do it. Okay. Question number two. What is important about life? Say that again? What is important about life? Living life to the fullest. Being able to live life to the fullest, being able to live the life that you want to live or the life that I want to live, being happy. That's what it, that's what it is. That's what it means. So self-love, internal love, no, no outside forces should be able to dictate how your life is going to be. Yeah, I should be able to di dictate how my life is going to be and how it should be. Okay. Question number three. What are you trying to accomplish with this new life? Every goal that I set out for myself, I want to accomplish. I don't want to get halfway there and then turn back around and start something else. I want to be able to complete all my goals, finish all my goals, reach all my goals. Yeah, because um, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I really like your answer because when I thought I was going to die and I had all these regrets, I'm like, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. This held me back. Now it's like, if that same opportunity comes again and I'm about to die, I don't want to be talking to God. I'm like, man, can you save my life? Cause I didn't do this. So yes, I want to accomplish everything as soon as possible. So yeah, when you want to come to get me. I'm ready to go. Exactly. Number four, you're talking about this new life and what you want to accomplish. What does that process look like? You know, what is the steps to actually make that happen for you? I just really have to just do it. I have to stop procrastinating and saying that I have, I can do it tomorrow. Instead of saying I can do it tomorrow or I can do it later, I can sit my ass down and just do it then and there. Do it now. So, yeah. All right. So you might need them Kleenex on this one. This is a different question I wanted to ask you, and I just want to see what you think about this one. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Who would most be impacted by your death and... How has your relationship with them changed? I think there's three people. Well, four. My kids and my parents. Um, you heard me call my dad daddy. I call my dad daddy. <laughs> and you're 44 years old. Yeah, I call my dad daddy. Um, yeah. We've become closer. Um, my mom and I, you know, we talk more. And my kids, I mean, those are, 
those are my guys. Like, those are my guys. You know what I mean? Anything, you know, I try to do everything with them. Try to like, let them experience life doing different things, you know? Those are my travel buddies. So I think those four people, yeah, my parents and my guys, my little guys. Well, thank you for your answers. There's two things I want you to do for me before we leave. First, I want you to give us a little food for thought or Nitra's words of wisdom that you want to leave onto our audience. And then I want you to give us a plug into all your stuff that you have and what you've been doing with your life and your publishing. Go ahead. Okay, I have this quote. Um, I am, therefore I'll be. And you can plug whatever it is, whatever it is that you are and that you're going to be. And that's my motto. I am, therefore I'll be. So I am, I'm well, therefore I'll be well. Um, as for what I'm doing, I am currently working on a virtual book launch. I have my one, two, third novel that I'm about to release in March, The Tales of Kayla and KK. I already have Dream Teeny and Dream Teeny 2. I have Pieces of Me and Simply Me, which are two poetry books. They're all available on Amazon, as well as Barnes and Nobles. Um, that's pretty much, well, there's more, but that's the only thing I can talk about. Right? That's the only thing I can say right now. But I do have, yeah, this next novel. It's, um, I think I'm gonna change the title and call it, uh, no, I won't, even, I won't even say because I might not change it. But right now it's called The Tales of Kayla and KK. Um, and that's going to come out in March. And that's going to be available softcover, ebook, and audible. And yeah, that's about it. One last thing. If I wanted to follow you on Instagram or if I wanted to look you up on the internet, what, where could I find you? You can find me. Um, at Dowdy Writes, D O W D Y Writes, W R I T E S. That's on Instagram and Twitter. My website, www.dowdywrites.com. Uh, if you want to joke, if you want to laugh, Slim Goody. <laughs> <laughs> Slim I laugh every day. I laugh every day. On IG. So, yeah. See ya. Well, thank Definitely. you, sister, for joining us, and I really appreciate your time. So that's the logo right there. If anybody see that logo, that's where you could actually find her on Instagram and also Twitter and also her Facebook page. Um, thank you yep. so much for coming on, giving us your story. I'm very proud of you. You know, thank when you, you told me that, you told me this, I was scared for you. I was very hurt. I didn't want this to happen to anybody else, especially people that I know. And to see did you come out of this so triumphantly. I'm very proud of you, sister. Thank much love. You. Thank you. Much love to you. And thank you for always being there for me when I need to talk. No doubt, sister. No doubt. Anytime. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.